Hi, I'm Sam Taggart, host of the DDD Podcast, where all things door-to-door come under one roof in one community, up-leveling each other all over the country. Go join our group, DDD Can't Knock This, for more questions and answers and insights on door-to-door training. Also, register for our event at dddcon.com. Don't forget to check out the DDD University Door-to-Door Planner to really up-level and increase your performance. Now stay tuned for this episode on the DDD Podcast. All right, everybody, this is Sam Taggart with the DDD Podcast, and I'm here with a very special guest. He is the CEO and founder of SVG, which Storm is Ventures Group. Storm Ventures Group um, has a long, rich history of door-to-door, which is awesome. You built a $173 million in revenue over 13 years in chasing storms, right? Basically doing restoration, insurance. A lot of roofing. A lot of roofing. restoration. Uh, general contracting, you name it. That's post awesome. Post-hurricane, post-hail. So now, and you're also the founder of the Win the Storm Conference, Win the Storm right? Conference. And that's coming up in March? So March 1st and 2nd, March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 2018. Yeah, so we're 60 days out. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I've got a booth there. Super you're excited to be there. Yep. yep. Um, so one of basically the thought leaders of the Storm and Restoration Groups. Well, we call it the Insurance Restoration. Insurance the, Restoration. The, the, the sophisticated the, name. Yeah, the sophisticated. Okay. The, is the, uh, we could like to call it the the sophisticated name, not Storm Chase, but the insurance restoration industry. Cool. Which this year is a $300 billion industry. It's awesome. And just last year was $100 billion. And so you can see it's growing exponentially due to, you know, and more or less climate change, whether you believe in, believe in global warming or not. Hey. Like climate change is real. It's real. It's happening. <laughs> There's more hailstorms, more tornadoes, more hurricanes, and it's growing exponentially. Yeah, so I'd love to dive into kind of back to 1999. You're this... 1999. Yeah, tell, tell me how you got into this whole door-to-door, like... Yeah, well, ni- uh, 98, so I started to put a book about the whole experience called Win the Game. And it goes, Win the Storm. But 1998, big hills from hit Minnesota. I'm, I, was, I was born and raised in Minnesota. You know, I went to the military right after high school, did three years overseas, came back, got the Army College Fund, so I go to college, got my undergrad in marketing, then I got my MBA in marketing. Then I went and worked three years for Corporate America, Ecolab. It's a big $2.5 billion public traded company downtown St. Paul. And, uh, you know, I spent three years, you know, Running around North America, launching products, you know, working with their engineers, a lot of, you know, their chemical business. Yeah. Um, creating sales programs for distributors, you know, really getting into the marketing and sales, which, which is a fun job, don't get me wrong. Post MBA, I mean, I had a travel budget for, you know, I was in my mid 20s, late 20s then. I yeah. travel North America, train sales reps, do marketing campaigns. It's a fun job. It was corporate America, you know, 67, 65, yeah. 70,000 base coming out of B school ain't bad. You think yeah, it's a you, lot. In comparison to probably your friends, you're on top yeah, of the world. Doing it, yeah. it was the dream job. Yeah. But when you take, look, when you have, and I had, I had 40, 50 grand in graduate school loan debt. I had 30 grand in credit card debt. And when uncle when, when you're a W two wage earner, you know uncle or uncle Sam takes about a third. Yep. So you might, you know, 65 might sound good on paper. You're really taking home 35 or 40. Yeah. And when you got a lot, of, when you got a lot of college loan debt and all that kind of stuff, so. While I was there towards that end of three years, the romance of this vision of the perfect job that I worked so hard for was slowly coming undone. Yeah. And I realized I need to do something else to make real money. And so I started, I didn't want to quit my job. I just wanted to find a part-time opportunity to make some extra money. So sure enough, this big hailstorm hit, <laughs> you know, these, you know, guys from Texas and uh, uh, different, you know, Colorado came into Minnesota. It was a big hailstorm. It hit like seven zip codes, real high-end homes. Everybody's getting new roofs, new cedar shaped roofs, all this stuff. Well, if you're not in the business, you don't really know what that means. Yeah. I thought it was kind of weird, but I met these guys out, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we're here to, you know, replace all these roofs, yada, yada, yada. We're making all this money. They're buying drinks for everybody. I'm like, wow, these guys are they're high rolling, or they're making some money. What, what is this all about? Maybe I can do this part-time. I was going to quit my job. Yeah. Part-time, and I'd go out. And, uh, so sure enough, I went out uh, two evenings a week and Saturdays, started learning about this game, knocking doors. And really, I just ran around with a guy in his truck for a couple of days, watched what he did, and I went, man, this isn't hard. Yeah. Insurance company's paying for this stuff. They're just showing the homeowner how to, you know, this is how you file a claim, this is how you, you got to meet the yeah. adjuster out, you're basically getting a new roof, siding, gutters, yada, yada, for free, minus the deductible. You know, back then it was 500 to 1000 bucks for a deductible for a new $20,000 project. And I thought, wow, that ain't selling. That's that's order taking. Yeah, that's <laughs> For easy. me, I came yeah. from me. I, we were hardcore uh, at Ecolab. You had to go out and, like, sell the... The plant engineer, the safety officer, do a three day. This is how to use our products. You got to earn that business. This is like, I was like, I couldn't believe it. So, 
I still didn't quit my job. I just went out, you know, moonlighted on the job for about six months. And, you know, long story short, I made just working part time, not knowing what the hell I was doing, but I knew how to sign those deals. Yeah. I learned this real quick how to get on that property, how to get on that roof inspection, and how to sign that contingency agreement. Not a very hard thing to do, actually. But I, I was real good at it. I got good at that real quick. I didn't understand construction per se, but I learned how to sign those deals. And so I worked, I moonlighted on the job. I think I made 70, 65, 70,000 sales commissions working part time. With very little training, mind you, and yeah. I thought I couldn't help that one or anything. Well, man, what if I did this full time? Yeah, it's like one of those things. Like, wait, I'm wait, not I just like, made that. I'm not, I'm not even two feet in. Yeah, like, I just made that part time. My toes dipped in. Yeah, I made that part time, not knowing what I was doing. And I, you know, after six months, you learn a lot through heart trial and error. And then I then I made the decision I wanted to quit. It's probably the best decision I made in my life to quit my job, my W two way, way. I took that security blanket away, and now I felt like I had something really to prove because everyone thought I was nuts. Yeah, They're like. Your dad's mom, like, wait, you're going to go... Yeah, the mom, know. the girlfriend, the whole family's like, wait a minute. You don't know how to screw in a light bulb, Anthony. You're going to go sell roofs, sell roofs for a construction company or sell construction services yeah. door to door and leave a cush post-MBA job that you went to all those years of schooling for? And I'm like, yep. And I did. And then be, probably because of that risk I took, I felt like I had something to prove. So it was that first, I call that the first full year, the first full year that I really committed to the industry. I sold, you know, I, Went out and I hustled and I sold and I worked sun up to sundown. But I, you know, I sold three point two million, which, which is, more, is more than some small companies. Yeah, do. I was going to say that's just, more. And uh, anybody that doesn't know the roofing space, that's top one point. It's pretty big numbers. Yeah, that's you, you know, know. I had a couple of little guys underneath me that knocked doors. I can't. You call them canvassers. canvassers. I was smart enough to hire a canvasser because one man, one woman can only sell so many jobs. When you're prospecting, you're not doing what. You're not signing deals, meeting adjusters, filling out contracts. You're prospecting. So if you can limit your prospecting time, I learned real quick, hire a canvasser, I limit my prospecting time, I'm going to sign more deals. I'm yeah, you're more in front of, because at the end of the day, what they makes money is being in front yeah. of being Yeah, they in front had, of me, I had two full-time canvassers. Not full-time, but three-quarter time. So like, I woke up on a Saturday and I had six inspections. I didn't wait, on the, wait for the company to hire them. I just did it intuitively to make more make more sales, make more money. But So I hit 3.2, I made close to 400. Now, when you go from making 65, I think I was 65 base at Ecolab, when you go make 65 base to 400,000 and I, what I call 1099 independent contractor money, it means you kept all your money. Yeah. And you pay tax at the end of the year off you, after you offset all your deductions, but you're keeping all your money. Yeah. That's a huge difference than making basically 40 a year after taxes. I mean, we bought, I bought a new house. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, what'd you, I was, like did, was it gone here I got quick? the first Escalade <laughs> with TVs in it. I bought the $500 pool stack. I mean, yeah. I spent a lot of money because yeah. I was young and having fun. But it was a life-changing experience for me. And I thought, wow, this industry is great. And I got oh, real excited sure. about it. You got hooked on the cocaine of sales. That's what yeah, I call it. It's like the commission of life. <laughs> it's, it's a drug. You're like, it oh, was, I need uh, another sale. It was definitely a life-changing experience. So I, you know, at that point, I started this, you know, the, the machine starts working. I'm thinking, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I need to figure out how to become an owner. And I stayed with that company another year as a sales manager, actually. I did stay out with them another year, year and a half, and built them up in three states from... From doing five million a year typically to thirty million. Wow. You know, I brought my friends in, recruited, you know, during this time what I noticed was there a lot of stuff missing in this industry for training. I'm like, man, everything we're doing, we're learning on our own. We're learning as we grow. It's like you bump in your head to learn how do I deal with state farm on this? How do I learn how to use a set of build I mean, everything I learned we learned the hard way because yeah. there was no it's not like there was a book or training or anything you could pick up and uh, learn this industry. It didn't exist. And so even back then I was thinking, Wow, man, this industry really needs some some finesse and some, yeah. some education, you know, something to teach these guys how to do what we do. 100%. And so, you know, naturally I outgrew that company. Like all you, like a lot of you sales guys end up outgrowing your companies. You become the entrepreneur. I was one of those guys. I think I got slighted, you know, $10,000 and something. But the truth is I probably made it up in my head. Yeah. You know, we, sometimes we make things up exactly. so that we can go out and start our own business. Man, yeah. they owed me some money, man. They probably did owe me something. But they actually, you know, oh, for the most part, it was a great company to work for. I learned a lot. Um, but I made something up to leave. You know, a lot of these guys do that. And they, yeah. oh man, that's a horrible company. But <laughs> yeah. They're all, make all up psychologically just so they can leave the all company. All the time. So I started my own business uh, with another top sales guy. Probably the worst thing you could do in a construction business, guys, is team up with another top sales guy. Yeah, <laughs> you need a you need an ops guy. <laughs> and neither, Two neither, sales guys? Neither of us had any production experience. Yeah, exactly. But we knew how to sell. We knew how to train salespeople. So we built this massive uh, sales team of our friends and even some family, yada, yada. And just, you know, skyrocket. I mean, literally in the first year and a half of being in business, went to 25 million in sales, wow. which is unheard of for a new company. And it was, uh, 
we learned production the hard way. There's no book you could pick up. This is how you run 30 residential jobs a week, right? And you're like, oh. And you had a problem. You know, this is back when you had whiteboards. You had jobs coming in, sometimes 30, 40 jobs coming in a week, wow. little magnets. Then had a problem repair board. We, you know, So we ended up learning production the hard way, which is, which is a great way to learn, trial by fire. You know, we have an, ended up hiring an office, uh, a roofing production manager, a siding production manager, a, a miscellaneous trades production manager, all in the office. Wow. And then a, uh, a problem, rep- got one guy from college just to manage the problem repair board. There's so many problems. And then we had five, we ended up hiring five QCs in the field, split the city up. And so we learned through, through uh, because we had to or we would have died. Yeah, so I, I, I want to focus a lot of this podcast on that, on scaling a business. Because right mm-hmm. now, your whole focus of your business is teaching entrepreneurs how to scale how to business, scale. how yeah. to train, how to train their So hopefully people. they don't have to go through that pain. Exactly. <laughs> no, because you went through it. You did 13 oh, years of trial, error, fail. Trial, I remember, error, fail. I remember production managers up in our office crying at midnight because it was so stressful to get through that hump. Yeah. And we lost a few. I mean, it was painful. It was oh, a painful sure. time. But once you get the system down, I was like, man... Now I know how to run high volume production, have the right key people in place. What do they do? When do they call Mrs. Smith? How do they drop materials? How do you make sure the right drip edge shows up on time? All this little stuff you learn through, you know, how does your order sheet look? Yeah. You know, you start learning how to systematize that so that those problems don't happen again in a production cycle, in, a, in your production system. And then, of course, you have a whole new set of problems later on called collections. <laughs> so it's a yeah. sell, build, collect. It's either it's one, either aren't, you know, aren't doing enough in sales, or if you are, you get, a, you get another set of problems called production. And then finally, the last set of problems is usually uh, for contractors in the collection area. Really? So called sell, build, collect, yeah. So let's kind of fast forward. Now Now you've started, you've branched into more of the training and events and really kind of being a thought leader in the industry just because you probably saw a hole in the sense of like, man, every other person that's going and starting an insurance restoration business has to just start from nothing. And they just have to kind of do the whole trial or trial well, yeah. or fail. So through that whole experience, even as a sales guy or even as a sales manager, back as a sales manager, there was no tools, resources, book to go to. Deliver. How do you build a sales team? How do you teach guys how to do this? How do you teach someone how to meet an adjuster? I mean, yeah. this kind of a, it was kind of a new industry back. I mean, it's it's now becoming a very well known industry called the insurance restoration industry. Twenty years ago, it was you know storm chasing. It's a bunch of mom and pops running around. Getting lucky, knocking doors, you know, not really anything systematized. But, you know, we start to think about $300 billion of insured losses. You have a real industry on your hands. Yeah. And somebody has to, at some point, consolidate and bring some some stuff together in this program, which is why I wrote Win the Game, the book. It's why we do the conference. You know, start bringing some of these players together and then the virtual training. I wish I would have had it back then. But the virtual training really put that together to help fill in those gaps. Here's how you teach a salesman how to knock a door, how to sign a deal. What is a deal? What is a cancellation term on a deal? How do I use a set of build contracts correctly? How do I meet an adjuster and not act like a public adjuster so I don't get sued but still get the job done? Yeah. You know, all these little nuances, someone had to spill out. So, we, you know, we started creating a, uh, you know, we write it about in a book, but nobody reads anymore. You, nobody reads a book. They you skim through the it these days. Everybody's got two, eight, they're too ADD to read yeah. a book. So, so we created the virtual training platform uh, so that, you know, owners and managers could literally push their people through and I say force to force train because really it's force force them to train to learn the industry step by step starting from the interview process itself to the first door knock to the first adjustment to all those things that took me out <laughs> I, mean, I learned yeah. the hard way I'm like man if would I had this back then you know not just the sales guy but the manager and then how do you hold those people accountable and how do you make sure they go through the performance testing and how does the owner hold his production manager accounts receivable manager accountable to learn stuff so the, the production cycle goes better or the accounts receivable gets, you know, collected faster. You know, we have, a, we have a, you know, it's not just sales, it's sell, build, collect. Yeah. It's the whole site. We call it the three pillars of success. So, so walk me through, let's take a company that's just trying to figure it out on its own and then maybe a company that found some kind of structure and system through the university that you guys have in this virtual training. What, what stories or, or things have you seen over well, the last few years? Every, everybody, will, first of all, every entrepreneur there wants to grow. I mean, you hear the stories, hey man. We're going to do millions this year. We're yeah. going to sell millions. I'm going to sell, you know, my company did 10 million last year. The truth is, look, some guys, and I was the same way, you get lucky on a storm, okay? And you do 7 to 10 million. But to maintain that when a storm cycle is gone through retail or to do it on multiple storms or multiple offices, you hit a certain point where you just can't grow anymore. It's called the bell-shaped curve. You can only hire so many salespeople. Yep. Certain managers are going to quit and leave and go start their own business. Certain sales guys are going to go over here and go over there. 
And you really have to have a system in place where you, where you have the ability to recruit, train any of these key managers and any salespeople at any given time. And duplicate. Not just on a storm. It's very important after a storm because you got to hire 10 people right away. you got to hire all these managers right away or you won't scale and capture that, that revenue that's out there. But even after a storm, you have to have this ability in place so that you can maintain that, 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 that revenue and profit model even after a storm and recreate yourself when people do leave or bad things do happen. And that's what happens in construction. A lot of blue collar, a lot of bad loyalty, a lot of this or that. The entrepreneurs who have a system in place to always recruit and train, always recruit and train, sleep better at night than the ones that don't. And the ones that understand that training, the only way to truly scale in this industry is to train effectively. you got to yep. train your people. No, and that's like what I'm Money's working. not going to do it. Look, I've seen a lot of guys get a lot of money. Yep. They get it from the insurance companies. They run out of money. They don't have, They don't train their people properly. They have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of liabilities because they don't have certain things like the right set of terms in their build contracts. Or, or they're filling their build contracts out incorrectly. Or their sales guys aren't trained how to fill them out correctly. So many stupid things happen just at the kitchen table when guys are contracting the job. 100%. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of mistakes are created just right there. So... All these little training nuances have an effect on the, the, the company's ability to scale. Yeah, and it's just one more fire that the CEO, the entrepreneur, has to put out because they're sitting there like, oh, shoot, we didn't even think of that little piece. And we didn't, right. you know, oh, we, we didn't really have much time. And if you're to a new entrepreneur, in, yeah. look, and a lot you of these guys are so new entrepreneurs hats. and they're starting out. They've never ran into that pain point. Yeah. And now they got 20 guys out there running around, knocking doors, filling out contracts, and they're doing it incorrectly. And they don't know until they get that $100,000 problem in their hands. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, and, and, and what's wild is like how many times a salesman, just like you, you're like, I was the top salesman. I'm going to go start my own roofing company. And then you get your face kicked in when you realize, oh, wait, there's more than just selling. Like, That's 80% of your entrepreneurs out there, too. Yeah, exactly. And they're, they're really good salespeople, but doesn't mean, that doesn't mean they already have all the systems in place, all the organization, the operation, the finance. Like, and they don't, they don't realize that. So that's like one of the biggest holes that I'm trying to fill with the door to door university is like, at least let me take off how to train your salespeople, how to recruit, sell, and lead mm -hmm. piece of the business. So Which, by the way, is most important. 100%. Because if you don't scale, your, and we talk about this in a book, we talk about it in a virtual training, look, if you, don't, if you don't know how to scale your revenue department first, none of that other stuff matters. Oh, I've seen it over and over again. Guys that spend six months making a business card, a oh, website, yeah. and it's like... Website trucks, yeah. hire these fancy managers and production managers, and they never scale their sales department. Yeah. Meaning you have to have the ability to recruit, train a sales department, create revenue, convert leads to sales, and really systematize that revenue department, and then start focusing. Because guys are like, well, what, what should I do first, Anthony? Huh? Look, focus all your energy on your revenue department, master that, and then move over to production, called the three pillars of success, and then move over to collections. You know, you, you're not going to do them all. You're going to do you can do most yeah. of your revenue department, a little bit of production, and you, you scale through as you grow through the other areas, but you can't do it all at once. You know, so, bite off little pieces of so what are some of the practices that you've seen when you're you know analyzing companies that you guys service now but also when you ran yours to really scale your business fast like what are some of the things that you well that we've got uh, in the last year alone we have 350 clients out there that use our virtual trainings they're companies so there's yeah. actually a lot more users because the average user uh, has five users per company some have 50 we have companies like uh, Crest Exteriors or Collis Roofing, these are 50, 60, 70 million dollar companies or 20 million dollar companies that have like 40 or 50 users. We have guys just started in their basement where their girlfriend's doing the accounting or hiring their two friends. Yeah. And they use my program with five users. We have sales guys that just buy the one user version of our program, which we don't often advertise, but I want to help everybody. So if there's a sales guy, his owner doesn't want to get the training for him, he goes, hey man, my owner's not getting the training, but I want your training. Then we have an unadvertised one user option. They have to pay the year in full. It's like $199 a month or $23.80. It's not that expensive, $23.80 for the year. And that, that allows that salesman now to access all that training. <laughs> Problem is, he's getting all the manager training too. So a lot yeah. of those guys become entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, whereas when the owners buy it for their sales guys, only the, sale, only the uh, sales level courses are seen by the salespeople and the management courses, key management courses, uh, and owner level courses are for the owners. So they're able to control the training that way. Yeah. So what, what, what things like have you seen people go wrong with like as far as running their business? Like biggest pain points that you're like, man, if I could just tell every business owner that's trying to scale their business to just not do this or do like I think most of the I think if you look in the construction industry and restoration, eighty percent of the problems revolve around the lack of training on the sales individual sales individual. Because believe it or not, um, the salesperson is the one contracting a job nine times out of ten the kitchen tables. Yes. They're knocking, you know, knocking the doors is pretty rudimentary. It's a very important part to create revenue. 
You but will. when you sit down with a set of build contracts now, so take this guy who delivered Domino's pizza two weeks ago, right? Yeah. He learns how to knock doors, goes through a training program. He meets an adjuster, and actually he's got a set of insurance paperwork 10 pages long, and it could be an $80,000 claim. This is three weeks later. He's got a $40,000 check to pick up, and how he fills out those build contracts to that customer <laughs> can determine that job's profitable or not profitable. Yeah, and, and he could and also... Do you know how many guys are winging it and giving it to the guys going, here, here's how you fill it out, pick out colors for the roof, go pick up the check, and they never sat at the kitchen table with them. It's but, crazy. But what's wild is I think a lot of people underestimate the amount of touch points that now need to take place because it wasn't done right the first time. Yeah. It's like now you have to have admin people or revisits, and they're not home, and they're at work, and you're trying to collect it. Well, the guy drops the wrong price in the contract. Yeah, he forgets to collect the deductible. And, you know, you're talking about thought. Or he writes the wrong language in a contract, which holds the company responsible to redo the entire gutter system or repaint all the fence or all this stuff because he didn't look closely enough at the insurance paperwork. So a lot of this stuff is very, uh, it's, it's time consuming training for the owners or managers if they don't have like a virtual training program to force train their guys through. 100%. Otherwise that owner or that manager would have to sit down at three or four sits at the kitchen table. This is how you do it. This, and that's how some of them do it, the better ones. But let's be honest guys, <laughs> there's only a few of you doing them. A lot of guys are winging it as they go because they literally fire five, 10, 15 sales guys after a storm. I'm going to be an owner, manager, even another field trainer. You can't literally be in all those places at once. Yeah, so a lot of mistakes happen in that growth because of the lack of training yeah. and because of the speed to market. Yeah. No, yeah. And, I, and I think that's what, I mean, just in any door-to-door -door sales, it's all about getting the market, getting, you know, it's like finding the low-hanging fruit before other people find the low-hanging fruit. It's almost like a race to market. A it's lot a, guys, it's a weird job in our industry because we're asking, you know, we're looking for this magical sales associate that can one minute go out, knock a door, climb on a roof, take pictures, which is basically a blue collar job, maybe measure, measure you know, yeah. you know, take pictures of the damage. And at the next minute, he's sitting down crunching numbers on a $100,000 or $150 million insurance claim. What's actual cash value? What's depreciation? What's PWI? What do I use for my contract price? Yeah. What can I say at that kitchen table? Pizzas that it, yeah, yeah. That, that, but it's a very white collar. So now you got a, now you got a very white collar type job. Yeah. So you're really asking us, we're trying to look for this individual that can do both or train him how to do both. And it's not an easy person to find because it's a, it's almost like a right brain, left brain activity. One, hey man, smiling, look, looking good yeah. at the door, getting the door open, sign a deal. There's people that are really good at that. And then there's other people that are more left brain that are really good at sitting down, crunching numbers, divvying out which trades we're going to do on a contract. Yeah. And now you're talking about a left brain activity. So we're asking, a lot of these guys, we're asking to squish both those activities into one person, which is fine, but you need a whole lot of training to do that. Yeah. You know, because you're typically one person can be good at one and good at the other. Your best salesmen are good at opening doors, getting deals signed, probably aren't the best at number crunching. 100%. 100%. <laughs> but it's out. like they have to be able to do it. In our industry, now some owners out there split out the activities, but I'd say 80% of them, they're, they're, that sales associate is doing both. Yeah. And it's just being willing, yeah. like, I think also, like, setting expectations when you recruit to say, hey, you got to be able to do both these things. Yeah. And, like, you know, setting good expectations up front because a lot of times you probably have reps that are like, well, why do I have to do all this paperwork? I just thought I was a sales guy. And this, you know, <laughs> when you recruit them, you don't tell them about it, all that stuff. It, you know, <laughs> hey, man, you're making a lot of money. Just go knock yeah, the door and exactly. sign a deal. It's like, you hey, really got to be the, yeah, the, yeah, the adjuster, you the and crunch this. of numbers. We kinda, you, you teach them in phases. We call it phase one and phase yeah. two. But, you know, some of them really like it. There's guys that really enjoy doing that because that can lead to a lot more money for the sales associate if they learn that. But, again, you're talking about a lot of training. It's a lot of It's a lot more than, you know, knocking doors is huge. There's so many other tasks that come into uh, being a project manager, a sales field project manager for a, a roofing restoration coming in a post-storm environment. You almost need a law degree, an engineering degree in some cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an appraisal degree. You know, you need all these different things to make you a very effective person. And so without that training, you can imagine how much liability is out there for some of these company oh, for owners. Sure. And, and really how uh, the difficulty of retaining some of these guys that did come in thinking it's just knocking over some ideas and start realizing, well, i got to learn how to do all this other stuff. Yeah. But uh, so it's a it's a unique challenge, uh, in finding these people and training them, and in, in, in this in this type of industry. So I'm 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 really curious. I want to hear a, a roofing pitch or a storm pitch or you know I want I want to hear it. Like I'm your customer. I just want to like you call, knock call, the door. Call, call, call. I'm I'm Granny Susan or no, whatever. Yeah, I'm 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 curious. Can we can like you up? can you get up or not? Or feel like... Oh, let's just stop. No, we don't have to. I can I can do it. Sitting yeah, down. we can do it sitting down. Yeah, um, <laughs> but. Get it restarted again. You just start rolling. All right, here's a cold call for you. Okay, wait, wait. Let me see. Are you good? Hold on. He's got to press play still. Okay, do you guys want to do it sitting or standing? We'll do it sitting. That's fine. Okay, hold on. 
Uh, you're you're sitting at home. You're drinking a beer. Yeah, I'm. You don't even know a storm hit your house. Exactly. I was like, I, I have no clue. I am watching the. Packers you're my favorite game. customer, man. You're like, yeah. cause you didn't know. I had no idea. I'm All like, right. my, uh, just All pulled right. out of the blue. Sweet. Okay, let me frame the question Sweet. before you dive Sweet. into it. That way, right, then this is the SPDU you take four. We're going to do a sales pitch to uh, Granny McGranison. And... All right, so I'm super curious because I've never been on a roofing call or, you know, a, just a cold call. So I'm going to be customer, and I want you just to give me your pitch because obviously we're talking oh, about it's a true lot cold of, call. True cold call. You're right? sitting at home drinking a beer. Yes. You don't even know a storm hit your house. Exactly. That was my favorite customer. Right, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you one of my pitches okay. here. Hey, can I help you? Hey, how you doing, sir? Anthony Del Medico with RFC Restoration. How are you today? Good. What are you What are you doing? Okay, we're out. Uh, we're actually giving free inspections, roofing property inspections from the hailstorm that hit in August. Okay. Have you guys been inspecting it from the hailstorm? No. What do you mean? Can I show you the? Uh, by the way, visuals speak a thousand words. We don't have We don't have it, but we're no, that won't work. So here on August thirteenth, the storm went through this area. Create some damage in hell on some of the roofs, especially the older ones like yours. In fact, we just got off of Mr. Anderson's roof down the street today. That's why we're out here today, because we found a lot of damage that he sustained. In fact, if you look here, this is the type of damage we see on his roof. Oh, wow. And so when you start seeing granular loss and, and damage that looks like that, especially you start talking about five impact marks per 100 square foot area, your insurance carrier actually will pay for replacement in many cases. So when we see this on some of your neighbors' roofs, we go ahead, go ahead and notify a lot of the neighbors. That you, you know, this area got hit. Some of the insurance carriers are paying for new roofs. And today we're just doing a free inspection to see if you qualify. Uh, it only takes 10 minutes. doesn't cost you anything. If we see this kind of damage up there, we're going to take some pictures, and then we'll leave you some information that you can send into your insurance carrier to determine if uh, they want to come out and do an adjustment take a look at that roof. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how much, like, how much is it? Like I said, it's free. The inspection's free today. Uh, we we actually meet the insurance company out at no charge. We okay. hope to be able to do the work for insurance proceeds. So really, it's on our you know it's on our time and money to come out here and help you guys and take a look at these things. If it if it does get approved, we'd like to be able to do the work. That's why we're out here. But we do the we do do the work for insurance proceeds. Yeah, we is it, is there something you could like leave me like a card or something? Yeah, and yeah. Come back. Or? I'll tell you what. I'm going to leave you this uh, this storm report here. Okay, this tells you what's going on in the area, and uh, there's my contact information. But just real quick, just so you know, you know, I do have, so you see across the street here, uh -huh. some of our guys are out doing inspections. We are going through the whole neighborhood today. It's Saturday. It's a nice day. Again, while, since we're here, we can knock it out. Not bother you. I can leave you the actual inspection. That way you have a little bit more information. Okay. Um, if you do decide to call your carrier, because we won't be able to come back out here now for another week or two due to all the, there's a lot of work going on in the, in the different zip codes here. Okay. Yeah, that, that'll work. Yeah, I mean, so why don't, just knock, why don't we just knock it out real quick today and I'll just take the pictures I know it looks like you're busy with the family here yeah, today. Yeah, we're just watching the game. And that way when I come back on Monday, you'll have all the pictures and the inspections done, and we can just talk about how to get this thing rolling with the okay. insurance carry if you have the damage. How long does it take? Just about 10 minutes. Okay. All right, good. My all name's right. Anthony. I'll, uh, what I'll do is take the pictures. You got my information. I won't even bother you again. Um, why don't you just fill out this while I'm, while I'm up, up on your roof. Okay. And then I'll have your information so I can call you back on Monday and set up a time. Okay. That'll Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. Cool. That was cool. I, I, I've never seen or watched or been part of. Like, well, that's a like, that was really improv. But you get no, that was good. No, it, and and it's interesting because I have like you know the five steps to a perfect door approach, and I was trying to watch as you did it. I'm like, I wonder if he follows the same principles that I follow in an alarm pitch to a solar pitch, to you know I pitched a lot of different things door to door, and it's like. I'm like, I've never done salt or roofing, so it's like, I'm, I'm just curious. Well, a, lot of, a lot of customers, it's not as important as them as it is to you, especially if they don't know they have damage. And so you have to literally, you have to drop the homeowner's names you're dealing with in the area. Yep. You have to have vis visuals, especially for new guys are important. Yeah, I mean, it's getting I like engaged. Oh, I love no, it. I mean, people, visuals speak a thousand words. When I, when I showed you that storm map, you can see there's proof that there was a, you know, a storm through the area. And I flipped it over and showed some pictures and close-ups of the, of the uh, nearby neighbor's roofs. And now goes, they're knowing what I'm talking about. Exactly. And then I have a nice sheet here explaining why insurance companies are out here uh, looking at these roofs and replacing them. So I'm talking from a scientific standpoint instead of just, hey, I'm trying to you know, come I'm out trying and trying to make money. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, everybody's busy, man. Everybody's got their own daylight hour ish. They're, they're, they're busy eating dinner, so make it real easy for them. Look, you're busy eating dinner. It's not something we got to stop and bother you with right now. But let's go ahead and let's get the pictures done while we're here. I got, heck, and it's why, that's why it's always helpful to have activity in a neighborhood. Activity yep. begets activity. Yep. So if there's a guy getting up a ladder in the neighbor's roof, and I can point to that, or if there's a truck out doing something for the neighbor, 
people like doing what the neighbors do. Yep. That's why I don't like one guy selling by himself. I never think does that well in this business. When a leadership puts a team up, like a blitz team out, one guy on one side, one guy on the other. You can't always do it, but a couple of days a week, you'll find that those people are more effective because activity begets activity in the neighborhood. Mrs. Smith wants to do it. Mrs. Anderson's doing it. Hundred percent. It's the bandwagon, and you use yeah. that, and you're like, "Hey, we just got done over on the Thompson's yeah. roof, and this is like, I'm sure you even show pictures of the. Hey, check this out. Like, this is just the picture. Well, I'll bring their these... insurance paperwork. Yeah, and it's hey, like, look, I just got them eighty eight thousand dollars for their house. Yeah, and just I won't like... show the the you know the the confidential information, but hey, this is the claim that we just got settled over here. And it's that bandwagon approach. Why wouldn't you want to have it inspected? Yeah, and it's, it's kind of, free. But then I love how you're like, hey, I'm just going to hop up there to see if you qualify. It's that pullback of like, hey, not everybody is going to qualify based on their roof and stuff because not everybody got hit as bad as Anthony or Tony or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that's like a little pullback, and then it creates that curiosity of like, well, I wonder, I wonder if my house gets a free roof. You know what I mean? Mm. And, the, and so that you you literally followed kind of the. You know, the intro break per occupation, you dropped some names and you got some credibility. You then kind of were like, yeah, hey, drop those names, man. what's good. in it for me? Hey, you know. Yeah, sometimes you got to, I always push, you know, at least one rebuttal. Like, people are always busy. There, There's always a reason they don't want some stranger yeah. in their house. So, you take it one level, but you don't take it two or three. Like, if somebody really doesn't want you there, they could be, maybe they have a romantic time with their wife or girlfriend inside. You know what I mean? It's, or maybe I, they're I've fighting. Been there, been there. Maybe they really don't want somebody on the roof. So, you, gotta, you give it one push. And then, okay, you know what? That's great. Here's some information. I'll tell you what, I'm in the neighborhood a couple of days out of the week dealing with your neighbors. I'll come back on Tuesday. How's that? Boom. They got some information. They're expecting you to come back now. That's okay. I mean, you want to give it one try, but if you look desperate and needy, no one's going to want to do business with you, so you don't want to take it too far. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just kind of understanding that push and pull. Like, where is it? Mm-hmm. Where's the right push? Um, cool. So, I, dude, I've honestly appreciated this. This has been awesome, kind of diving into your space. Anybody that wants to know a little bit more about SVG, where can they find you? I guess where can they look you up? Well, we're uh, StormVenturesGroup.com. That's our parent company name. Storm that'll lead you to our. You know, there's, th- there's three major things we do. One is uh, one is a conference, Win the Storm. www.winthestorm.com. I'll be there. Half the industry will be there. Uh, SVG University is is a complete A to Z industry specific virtual training program to train all your managers, your salespeople, all the stuff in the contracting industry. That's www.svguniversity.com. And then we got our contractor store page where you can get like, it's like legal zoom for, for contractors. So contracts, forms, documents, build contracts, contingency agreements, pretty much anything you need paper wise to launch, grow or scale your company as a contractor. Yeah. Estimating programs, all that kind of stuff is on our is on our contractor store page. So that's our, our paper product page or stuff you need. You need to have this stuff as a contractor to, to cool. launch, grow, or scale your company. So those are three things. But that's, that can all be found at uh, stormventuresgroup.com. Cool. No, that's awesome. Yeah, look them up. Out on Facebook, win the storm. Anybody in Storm Venture Group, Gary Vandercheck speaking. Um, Gary B, baby. Yeah, some some really cool things. So, um, no, I appreciate your time. This has been awesome. Thank Good. you. Thank you for being on the show.